Okay. So next thing is uh, this this talk, right? I would really talk about the the section part for this one, mapping and path planning. Okay. So I have a ready made example, but let's go through that example and we'll focus on this. Okay. Because generally the slides here is really just examples of uh, the tools, right? But generally speaking here, when when uh, my, my examples later would actually use Rossback, then we'll do Slam, okay? And then basically once we have this one, we can create our planning and then we can also do control, okay? I'm not going to do like tracking algorithm. This is like, you really want to see the position of an object and try to avoid this in a, in a certain horizon, a time horizon, right? But my demo is actually using a Rossback data, a previously recorded data, we create the map of the environment and then we'll create the, the, how's it, the trajectory planning to move from point A to point B, right? But in, in terms of the tools that MATLAB has, there's really a lot of tools uh, involved. So one is that we can actually create a scene for you. So if you are familiar with the autonomous, I'm not saying Tesla, but I, I did go into a course last time. Uh, if I go to that course, I'm not promoting this course, but long time ago, I went to a course, Chrome, So I went to this course last time. The CT sensor fusion tracking. And one of the one of the examples or one of the use cases that they would use is actually MetaBin and Simulink. So this is the Let's look at his GitHub submission. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, you have sensor fusion. Okay, that's good. Oh, let me just go to it. Does it? So this is like an learning platform. But if I go to like individual and autonomous system, sensor fusion engineer, right? And let's say if we try to understand what is necessary for you to, to learn, to become a ADAS or autonomous driving uh, or autonomous robotics engineer, these are the things that you need to, to learn. LIDAR, the camera, the radar, and the common filters. But the whole, let's say, I'm not, I'm not saying the whole thing here, it's a combination of C and C++. But once you go to radar and common filters, this is where they actually use MATLAB to teach. Because once you have all these algorithms out, the next thing that you might need to do is to do, how is it, scenario generation, right? So if I go back to my slide here, what we are actually doing is that you have all the sensors of that vehicle, right? You have a radar, you have a LIDAR, you have a image and all these things come together. The next thing that you want to do is create a scene or a scenario to verify that. So when you're doing sensor fusion, right? When you talk about sensor fusion, you have radar, you have LIDAR, you have camera, you add all this together you actually create a very how's it, accurate positioning of objects in front of you. Okay. Is there any questions on the ground? So if you do have questions, just put it in the chat, then I will let uh, has it bang, 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 to translate it for me. But if you can unmute yourself, let's say, uh, maybe we reserve it later. Okay. But anyway, the thing here is we need to bring it to a simulation. We're not yet talking about 3D simulation here because it's not really necessary. A 3D simulation is just good for visualization purposes, but your sensors doesn't really, how is it? 
pick it up in a 3D space. Maybe your LiDAR, but the LiDAR, the LiDAR's ultimate goal, let's say you have an object, right? Like like this one. You have a maybe a LiDAR point cloud when you have a Velodyne sensor. The most important thing that the LiDAR does is that it actually just create a bounding box. Maybe it's it's in 3D space, right? A bounding box of this object in front of us. And then the location of that. So once you have this bounding box location of this, what you get is basically something just like this, uh, a bird's eye view of all these uh, objects. Okay, so it's not really necessary to go to like Unity, Unreal Engine to have like a 3D simulation. A cuboid is good enough when you're doing sensor fusion. So once you probably create that simulation environment, the next thing that you might want to do is also what we call as uh, localization. So if we try to go back to episode one, what we talk about there is really create a kinematics model. Right. Remember, I talk about we have a, a function that takes in VL, the velocity of uh, the velocity of the left motor, and VR, which is the uh, velocity of the right motor. But the equivalence of this one is actually the pose. Right. When we talk about the pose, it means to say the x, y, and z, and also the pitch, yaw, and roll of that particular object. So an example, if I move this uh, motor, so let's say there's there's a robot here, I move this across, I change the value of VR and uh, VL, right? Then definitely this robot will move across the, the place, right? And this is something that you need to do. And one, one particular thing that they do here is that they would use the LiDAR, right? Or audiometry, to figure out where they are in the map, okay? So this is like, you, you have given them the occupancy grid. This is the occupancy grid. You run, you start the robot. The robot immediately know where I am in a particular place. You try to move the motor right and motor left, then based on the scan of the LiDAR and plus the X, Y, and Z differentiation from your odometry, IMU sensors, then you know where you are, where exactly you are in the map. So that's where you can create like the, the, uh, the localization uh, perspective, right? Then you, you need to do what we call as uh, mapping, right? So we, you need to run across the map. So definitely the first thing that a robot does if let's say you just bought a Dyson vacuum cleaner or a Xiaomi smart vacuum cleaner, the first thing that the robot does is really scan the whole environment, create a map of the area. Because once it's created the map, he knows where it is, okay? Then it's not just limited to 2D. If you're developing something in 3D space, then you need to also build that. Uh, in 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 that space, right? Because let's say it's, if it's not anymore just a ground vehicle, what if it's going to be a UAV? So what we're doing here is basically stitching all the scans and then you build this map, okay? And then as, as what I mentioned here, there's multiple ways to simulate. One is in cuboid. The other one is basically uh, through uh, 3D space. So this is actually utilizing Unreal Engine and you can build a game in Unreal Engine and link it with MATLAB and then you can put a drone there uh, to, to simulate. But generally speaking, later we'll go for this one. I have an example of a LiDAR slam, right? So generally you will have multiple scans, but we need to create this map because later this map is going to be saved in our memory. And the, I think the most difficult part here is actually the loop closure. So you see this part, this section, it's like not perfectly aligned, but you need to align it. So this is what they call as loop closure. And now you have a perfect map. 
Okay, so once you have this, then this is your map that you're going to use. And later the robot will just complain. Let's say, let's say you have another furniture here, place in there. Then the robot will actually complain. Uh, I detected there's a new map. I'm going to erase my current map, replan the whole thing. So this is this is going to be your experience when you have a vacuum robot, smart vacuum cleaner robot at home. Uh, it's it's really smart, right? So it, it it knows that there's a new furniture or there's a new thing at home, right? That's blocking its way, and it will tell you it's not a temporary object. It's a new thing in the house. So I'm going to rescan the whole house so that I can optimize my next run. So that's what I mentioned. The first run. Uh, give me a sec. There's someone at the door. Uh, give me. Right. Give me a sec. Take your time, Yang. Jadi mungkin kembali lagi saya ingatkan untuk rekan-rekan uh, dari ITS, kalau ada pertanyaan bisa langsung diajukan melalui kolom chat, ataupun mungkin bisa open mic untuk bertanya langsung kepada Mr. Ian. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Take your time. Anyway, so okay, uh, is is okay if I interject already? Yes. Here. Okay. So again, uh, you need to build this one. So the first thing that you need to do is really build the occupancy grid, because once you have the occupancy grid, then you can you can already do your delivery. You can already do your cleaning. So a robot will be doing something like this. Right, a vacuum cleaner, and then scan the whole the whole thing, and then the comparison. Like you, you really compare like robots, right? They would, they would compete in terms of how fast would it clean the place. Okay. Silakan Pak. Jika ingin bertanya, Pak Nuriyono. Ada yang ingin tanyakan Pak? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think you can continue. First. So generally, MATLAB has a, a slam builder. We'll go through some examples later, but the idea here is that your robot will only see this one, right? Just its own place. But what we're trying to do here is that we're actually going to stitch the scan from let's say scan number one to scan number two to scan number three, lidar scan number four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you are actually building a different scan of that area. And what let's say just add it to the map, but there is like a problem there, right? So you can see here there is scan 23 and scan 24. And sometimes they are misaligned. So you need to have like a if you're familiar with image processing there is like a pattern matching uh, algorithm. And then if you have matched them, then you just need to, how is it, uh, append uh, the next the next uh, thing. So later there's a, there's an actual, uh, this, one is a, this, this one is a video for it, right? So this one is a video for it. So you are walking across the whole space Right. Sometimes your mapping algorithm might not be correct, so you can actually edit and correct it. So later, once you once you have the accurate model, then your localization algorithm will be very very in a perfect uh, place. Okay. Then again, as what I mentioned, it's not just for two D. We also support three D, right? Because you definitely have a two D lidar. There's also three D lidar. All right. So yeah. So if you are doing lidar processing or point cloud processing, then MATLAB does some application as well. So I will not put so much effort on the tracking, but uh, just to give you an idea, it's really about making sure that you know what is the object in front of you or at your back is trying to do, right? And you would notice, like, if I if I zoom in. This one has a certain like an arrow to men to mention what's their direction of look uh, uh, speed. Uh, what's their look? What's their direction? Is it going to hit you? Are they faster than you? Are they slower than you? How would it go for your through your vehicle? 
Okay, so you will probably need to do that if you are doing like advanced controls already, right? It's it's moving across a fast pace environment, and yeah, a typical workflow for it is basically you have three D, uh, data, you have three D lidar, you as what I mentioned earlier, you have a data points, right? Of points of data, you create bounding boxes of this. You track this one across the space, and then you need to fuse it with the the radar. So why people would fuse it is that it's because when you fuse two probabilistic curve, right? So let's say this is sensor one, this is sensor two, location of that particular object. If you add the two probability, you will actually get a very accurate uh, positioning. Okay, so just to give you an idea why people do like the fusion uh, here, right? You have image, it gives you a pixel based localiza lo localization of an object. You have a radar, it gives you a radar based localization of, a, of the object. You have a LIDAR, which is also good at certain localization of the, of the image. So once you mix all these things together, you have a very accurate location of them. And that involves like Kalman filters, uh, extended Kalman filters, unscented Kalman filters uh, uh, involved there. Okay. So there are some examples uh, for that as well. But I'm not going to go through that. Okay. The next thing is basically path planning, right? So you have a occupancy grid, you started off here, initial location, and you want to move here. But sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes your robot would face some, let's say, some obstacles. So this is the plan, but your robot suddenly noticed that there is an object in front of this. So you need to do a replanning. So how do you do that? That's why you see, maybe if you're familiar, I, because I'm very fond of this, but Kim, I, sometimes I'm very annoyed actually, because if I'm, I'm actually sitting near to the charging point of that robot or that vacuum cleaner, and it will try to find a way across my chair. And it's going to always hit my chair, trying to avoid me and trying to create a new trajectory for that particular path that he wants to take in. So something to take note. So there's what we call as global planning. You have an occupancy grid, go from point A to point B, but sometimes it doesn't happen. There's some obstacles here. How do you recalculate the, 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 the trajectory command? Because again, you cannot just say, okay, I'll wait here for two hours until this object is gone. We need to create a new map so that it's, it's, it's still going to continue its task. Okay. And uh, these are some examples of planning algorithms. So you have point A to point B, you see, let's say a, a slow vehicle, then you create another path, right? And overtake on that and then go back to the lane, right? And then uh, do your next next uh, right turn if there's no object in front, okay? So this is like just a very straightforward for it. If you think about it in cubic perspective, this is how it's going to look, right? So generally what it does, it already gives you like the proper, uh, the next path. And then if there's an object in front, then you create another, uh, you just go to that particular path. Then you go back to your lane if you want to. Let me just move forward. So we're not just dealing with AGV, but you can also do it with a drone. But generally speaking, like if, you, if you're working for a warehouse or a house, they would generally use a RRTE or district uh, or a star algorithms to create these maps for you, right? And you would notice how it's being created. It's just going to create a lot of trees or roots or stem and go from point A to point B. But after a few iterations, once it touches the goal, then it will already stop and tell you, I have a perfect, how is it? Link from point A to point B. It might also give you a solution, something like this. That's also possible. It might happen, okay? So something to take note for this. If you want to include like collision because it might hit a corner, then you just need to extend further 
the the space and that will give you how is it uh, uh allowance of space uh to to move across and i think as what we discussed last time your robots would have a controller right so you generate a trajectory but the robot has a weight has a motor and this is where your your pi pid control comes in or your pure pursuit algorithm comes in okay so something that they would use so this is just basically you have a waypoint and then you create this let's say a uh a line filling uh interpolation of that waypoints being generated by your uh, path planner and then basically you have a supervisor logic or a PID control. Okay, so something to take note for that. So later, uh, if if you are okay sat or let's say satisfied with all these things in place, the next thing is that you want to probably generate C and C++ code. So remember in our episode two, it's about ROS. Then as what I mentioned, if you have a ROS base, uh, NVIDIA Jetson or a Raspberry Pi, or let's say for this one, this is this is a race car J. It's actually a uh, Jetson uh, inside uh, this this uh, remote control. So the Jetson is something like this, but it's uh, part there. Okay, then you can probably create the control algorithm. But let's go to an example, right? Since we we still have some time, so I'll just go to my MATLAB. And what I have here is basically a race car J. So the one that I mentioned to you earlier, which has a Jetson on board and has a ROS environment as well. So I'm not going to run it with Gazebo. I'm just going to use Math MathWorks tools here. And what I'm going to go through is we started off to create the whole scenario that we have just discussed, right? You've noticed we need to connect to a ROS environment. We need to create, we need to get the sensor data. So what data do we have? A picture, odometry, and then the scan, the LiDAR scan, 2D LiDAR scan. Based on our sensing data, we need to understand if it's a wall, if it's going to be a object, or we need to make sense of the time series data that we just got from the sense data. Uh, from the from from the sensors that we have, so once you have built that environment, so when you talk about perception, right, for perceiving, is we build the environment, right, and it's one thing that we get from here is basically the what we call uh, occupancy uh, grid, right, or say OC grid, and then based on that OC grid, if you have a map, let's say like something like this, you go from point A to go from point B, how do I go over that, right? And this is where planning comes in. Control is more about following the waypoints because when, when you generate the, the path, right? It's something like this. The waypoints is something like this, right? And you need to have a more finer, how is it? Points rather than having to follow this because it will be robotic, right? What's going to happen? If you have these lines, it will be very robotic. What if we generate that trajectory? We make some curves about it, right? Then it's, how is it? A bit more soft and a bit kind of similar to a human being driving a vehicle or using, using the remote control, right? So let's, let's go through the example, right? So we have a demo set up. Uh, if I open, if I load this one, basically what, what we're trying to do here is within this app itself, right? So this is like what we can do if we follow through the whole thing, right? So I'm just opening up the app and what I have here, let me just increase the size. Can I increase the size? Yeah. What, what I have here is basically I can choose the map or the location, right? So after you're doing the mapping, you get what we call the occupancy grid. This is your occupancy grid. You might want to like also go talk to the civil engineer, ask them, can you give me a map of the whole place? That's also possible, 
right? Or this is acquired through scanning the whole place, right? You need you 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 probably have a person walking around the whole place with a lidar scanner, and scan in into the uh, space. So once you have this, let's say I just want to create a path. I'm oh, sorry. I would select on the map, right? Let's say I'm I'm here from this entrance and I want to go to this room, right? Oh, sorry, I want to go to this room. And then uh, based on this, I can choose what path planning algorithm should I use? So as what I mentioned, right, there is RRT, there's RRT star, there is district, uh, there is A star, there's really a lot of path planners available. But if you want to, you can have a look at it, but it's really just to create all these branches and uh, they have different properties and as its strengths and capabilities. But I, I would recommend to have a look of how this is written, but this is like purely Com computer science, ComSci, uh, how does it work? It's pure algorithms, okay? So I'm just saying, okay, I'm going to create a path plan from point A to point B, right? That's what I mentioned. It generates all these branches, right? And then I choose this one. So if I created that one, I can also maybe change RRT then create that map, that, that branching algorithm again. Can I plan? Yeah, so this is already, this is already a plan for that, so. Yeah, so another algorithm, it will choose this one. Okay, so this is pretty much how you get the plan, but you would notice it's still very robotic, right? Just imagine your robot will be doing something like this. You're like, okay, is it smart? Is it, is it a good robot? Something like that. So you need to uh, uh, create what we call the, uh, how is it? The pure pursuit or maybe a, a PID tracking algorithm, right? So if I execute the plan, right? So this is just an example. So this is the trajectory that is was generated. So you can see it's like, okay, maybe a bit crooked, but your robot will not follow this, right? It will try, right? But I think it's better to have this one smoothen out. Okay, so I, I just press execute path here. It's actually simulating a simulic model and running that uh, previous uh, simulation, uh, previous data sets that we have just recorded because I don't have the gazebo and the race car J with me. Uh, this is already done by MathWorks. So give us some time. It's still uh, simulating. But do you guys on the floor have questions? Uh, there's a question from Ahmad. Uh, Bang Bang, can you be able to translate? Uh, can you, because I, I'm just uh, rejoin. I oh, sorry. The message. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, let me put it in the chat. So there yeah. is a, there's a, a question from uh, Ahmad uh, Burhan. And are you able to read it? Yes, right. They're asking about slam. Yeah. So later I'll go for the slam topic. Okay. Don't worry. Uh, Ian, let me yes. translate it. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he asked about slam. Slam, we know that I uh, can scan uh, the localization, but yeah. uh, he asked uh, how about the global map? Global map means to say your. Uh, so so when you when you do your mapping algorithms, right? Let, let's say uh, you don't know yet. This is like basically your global map, correct? Right. So this is your global map. The first thing that your robot needs to do is just run across the whole location. So you might have a 
algorithm that just says, okay, walk across the whole place. Try to find out places that you have never been. Right? So once you have that, then go back to the original place. And then once you have all these things, right, you will get all these data points and you build your, uh, how's it, map. Then that's your global map. Okay? Correct? But I, I think there are some other methods, but again, the ones that I have experienced with is that they, they just have a random random scan all over the place uh, algorithm. Because that's, the, that's definitely what you want to do, right? Or some people, if I, if I remember, I talked to a roboticist last time. They don't, they don't own the, the robot, but they offer services for a robotics platform. So what they do in the evening, they go into a mall, they have a LiDAR scanner, walk around the place and build a map before the robot is, is going to be in that, uh, that working environment. Okay. But anyway, let's, let's go back here. So this one already is running. I'll, uh, when, when I press the play button here at execute path, right? What we're doing is we generate the trajectory, right? But as what I mentioned, there are parts here that might hit a wall, right? And it's like kind of, as what I mentioned, a bit not smooth, right? So you probably have, let's say, another uh, algorithm that's smoothing it out. And you would notice it tries to follow the path, but it's not really, really following the ones that is being generated by your, uh, how do you say it? Your, your path planner or RRT or R star. Okay. So this is what we're going to do today. This is the whole demo. Like this is what we can do. Okay. So let me just close this one and let's start from the very beginning. So first things first is that we have a uh, race car J, right? That's what I mentioned. The race car J has a NVIDIA Datsun and it's ROS compliant, okay? And when we talk about ROS yesterday, I mentioned that we do support ROS bag. So if I zoom in closely, that what we are trying to do is bring in that ROS bag data, okay? So the ROS bag data is basically this AH2OA bag. If you're looking for it, this is the guy. As what I mentioned, if you try to load it, right? Let me just go to that particular folder. Then go to the data, office map. You will notice a bag file is this size. It's a bit like, because it contains pretty much a lot of data sets. Right, so you would notice like for a scan, there's about 484 laser scans, but this is dependent on what laser scanner do you have. So you will have multiple points within that certain scan. So if you read that, right, we have the RGB data, we have the scan, the LiDAR, 2D LiDAR scan, and we also have the odometry. So if you try to read them, one by one, pretty much this is what we get. Like this is for the posts, right? Where is it on the map, X, Y, right? This is the LiDAR scan for the first data. But if you say I have the, the six data set, run this one. This is the six data, data point or the six information. I have 19, then this is the 19th information. Right. Next one is the how's it the the RGB or let's say just a grayscale version of the RGB of the camera sensor. So it means to say, uh, the first part is really just to bring in the data sets. It's either through cost simulation or through ROS back. All right. So we know that we can link through ROS, okay, and bring it to MATLAB. Next one is we want to make sense of the of the setup. So we're still loading the ROS bag. And what we're trying to do here is actually 
put it in uh let's say a proper uh a graphic right so we have all these things tightened up into a time and then we're actually moving across the uh the the, the space and this is what we get okay so maybe someone is controlling it or someone is just saying okay random command search you try to go across the whole map and then come back here after 10 minutes. Okay. So we have this. Then the next thing is uh, we need to build our SLAM algorithm. So I'll just go here, right? Run this section here. Run this part. And if you check on the model or the demo model, there is already what we call a control algorithm that would avoid uh, the object. So if I go back here, there's a, where is this? Yeah, so this is, this is something that we have that allows you to uh, create an obstacle free direction. So this is the ones that will create a another path but it will drive across so let's say your robot is driving or moving straight and then there's an object here then based on this algorithm it will try to avoid that and come back okay and look for the the the, the path again so this is what's being added here so if we try to simulate and check this uh, output uh, uh, this is th again. This is this is part of of the current uh, algorithms. Let me just remove, clear all breakpoints. Okay, stop. So, but when we have the robot, what we need to do first is actually build the uh, the occupancy grid or your global uh, uh, map, right? So what I'm going to do is I'll just import some ROS back. So remember, I have AH, uh, AH2A, uh, OA, path execution obstacles and obstacles, right? But I can bring in this, right? So same, I will bring in the ROS back data. I'll just say AH2OA because this is the smallest data set. And I'll try to start at two seconds so that I'll start relatively easy so then since our ROS bag has the the scan data i can just click apply and then let's wait for a few seconds okay done uh, let me close this If it's going to log, it's because I am loading X amount of data sets. Yeah, it actually closed down. Let me run that again. So again, what I'm saying is that we want to create the, the slam, right? And you might want to build the map now, or you can uh, you can you can have like a post-processing map or you can put this algorithm inside the robot, right? So if we go through and let me just press the run button for this one, for this one, and for this one. Give us, give us a few seconds. Oh, need to run this. Run. Run this one, run this one, run this one. OK. 
paper. Okay, done. Then let me run this one. Because again, we need to build the global map, right? And uh, what I what we need is actually just call this uh, Slam Builder uh, app. And again, you might want to bring this one to the embedded system. That's fine. But I'm just using the Slam Map Builder at the moment because later you can actually create the function for this one. Okay, so let's let's see. So I just open the Slam Map Builder. Take a, a few minutes to run. Oh no, my method is lagging. Anyway, uh, I'll just go back to the slides because uh, this is this is actually what we're doing here, right? So what we're doing is that we have multiple scans, right? And we want to stitch all the scans together. And when you have different scans, sometimes the scans might not be okay because sometimes this is just basically a a image registration algorithm and sometimes it would not match because your lidar might be under specified and it doesn't give proper features for the image registration or the point registration system is able to how's it stitch together right so once everything is in place then you create this occupant secret so what you do here is you can export the occupant secret and this is now your global path. So if we go back to uh, this one, let me close this. Why is it lagging? Okay. And let me just import the ROS bag. I'll just have the office map, right? And uh, basically I have all the scans of the system. Yeah, it's my computer is a bit laggy at this at this time. I'm not sure, but you can you you do see we have multiple uh how's it scans. So once you say I'm going to import this one and build the whole system, we're actually going to go through different scans of the system. Remember, we have 400 scans to go through, right? So if your robot is not moving in this one so it will actually just generate uh, this this scan here so if you wait for until the 100 then the robot will start moving and it's going to build but sometimes again just pause this one maybe can i drag this one no i can't drag let's say you you want to check your incremental match then you can rotate right so so sometimes your your design might be uh, the algorithm might be wrong so you can correct that and let's say you accept that then you can you continue again right you sync then con click continue and after which you can just say okay uh i will make it as a uh let's say as a, as a file in the workspace so this is going to be your occupancy map because later what's your what you're going to do is that we need to do our control, right? So once you have the occupancy grid, next thing is we want to go from point A to point B. But again, the global map, you need to create the map before uh, you will drive the vehicle here or the autonomous vehicle, right? So it goes back to what I have discussed uh, previously about the, the mapping uh, the, the global uh, trajectory and then the local trajectory. All right, so I think I'm running out of time, but this is what a how is it an actual robot would be in in the first place, right? So you create your map, uh, uh, your your global planning, and then you will also have a local planning because there might be some objects or human person 
in between your, your setup. And the next one is basically you want to control it. Okay. So to summarize everything for the whole tree session, right? It's very important you, you create first your robot model, right? So sometimes if you just get a ROS uh, platform, they already provide the robot model. They provide already the sensors of the robot. So it's easier for everyone to build the application. So it can be a drone, it can be an AGV, it can be an autonomous vehicle, it can also be a vessel, right? And then the next thing that you need to do as what we talk about is localization mapping. Advanced stuff is like tracking. I want to see the obstacle moving or not moving. What should I do? Then after we, we deal with the perception, we know the environment, the next thing is what should we do? How do we get from point A to point B? So once you create the trajectory, you follow that path. You follow the waypoint that was generated here. And then it just looks, loops back the whole process again, All right? So again, to summarize everything, you, there's might be a lot of toolboxes that we have discussed here, but please do check out some of our, how is it, tech talks and materials about uh, autonomous systems, navigation and sensor fusion uh, in, in our webpage. Okay, so I think I'm right, really running out of time. I, I think I overextended for five minutes. Uh, anything else? Any questions? So far, is it clear for everyone? I think Buazi already have asked to answer the question, Ian. Okay, okay, then that's that's really nice. Thanks, Azir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah untuk, uh... Bapak ataupun Ibu dari IPS dan rekan-rekan mahasiswa ataupun mahasiswi dari IPS, ini mungkin sesi, kembali lagi saya ingatkan, ini sesi terakhir kita untuk uh, robotik, ini sesi ketiga. Jadi saya juga sudah kirimkan untuk alamat email saya di kolom chat, jadi kalau mungkin masih ada yang ingin ditanyakan mengenai tiga episode kemarin, monggo silahkan email ke saya, nanti mungkin bisa uh, saya teruskan ke Mr. Ian untuk uh, menerima jawabannya. Seperti itu. Jadi mungkin untuk perwakilan dari ITS, Bu Dininya, mungkin ada rekan yang lain untuk menyampaikan kata-kata penutup sebelum kita akhir ini. Dari ITS, perwakilannya mungkin selain Bu Dini. Monggo silakan. Karena sepertinya tadi Bu Dini sempat izin ke saya, ada training offline yang lain. Jadi mungkin diwakili oleh rekan-rekan yang lain seperti itu. Ya, Mas Bambang. Ya, silakan, Pak. Oke, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih, Mas Bambang. Ya. <laughs> Saya tak on cam dulu aja. Oke. Okay. Terima kasih kepada Mas Bambang dan uh, Mr. Ian uh, yang sudah dengan sangat hebat ya. Tiga, tiga, tiga minggu ya, Mas Tiga minggu, tapi kesannya cepat ya Pak, emang sejam-sejam. <laughs> iya. Dia penasaran Pak. Tiga, tiga minggu mengarrange uh, pelatihan tentang uh, MATLAB uh, untuk bidang robotik ya. Ini uh, cukup menarik dan memang uh, ba uh, banyak yang apa namanya yang mengikuti, kurang lebih mungkin sekitar 40 orang ya. Uh, terima kasih juga kepada rekan-rekan semua. Ini ada mungkin rekan-rekan mahasiswa dan rekan-rekan dosen yang sudah mengikuti dari pertama sampai akhir mungkin ya. Uh, dan mungkin nanti ada feedback ya Mas Bambang ya. Boleh, monggo uh, silakan Pak. Ya, mungkin nanti ada uh, ada kuesioner yang harus diisi, mungkin nanti bisa kita share juga dengan Mas Bambang uh, apa namanya? Pada saat surveinya sudah terisi beberapa uh, nanti ya, mungkin beberapa hari lagi kita akan kirim. Ya, uh, yang jelas terima kasih kepada Mas Bambang, MedLab dan TechSource sudah menyelenggarakan training yang cukup bermanfaat bagi uh, sekuritas akademika ITS ya, uh, dosen, mahasiswa maupun teknik yang bergabung di sini. Uh, Mudah-mudahan nanti bisa lagi ya Mas ya <tuh> tahun depan. Jadi sekali lagi mungkin Pak um, Buat ini saya yeah. tambahkan nah, yeah. sekali lagi ini bukan akhir Pak Buat, jadi ini awal yeah. untuk kita bersama-sama bantu ITS. Untuk kira-kira yeah. share informasi apa yang kita bisa uh, tambahkan untuk informasi ke ITS, itu sih yeah. Pak. Yeah. siap, siap Mas. Yeah, jadi nanti mungkin uh, 
Kalau ada pertanyaan, monggo bisa ke DPTSI, bisa langsung ke Mas Bambang, karena Mas Bambang sudah memberikan emailnya, Nge? Ya, uh, di chat. Monggo silakan. Ya, uh, bagi Bapak Ibu sekalian yang masih penasaran ataupun ada pertanyaan yang mengganggu pikiran gitu ya nanti nggak bisa tidur nggak boleh oh, jadi tanyakan <laughs> monggo bisa kontak Mas Bambang atau ke DPTSI nanti kita sampaikan ke Mas Bambang jadi sama saja boleh ya mungkin itu dari kami Mas Bambang terima kasih sangat dan thank you for Mr Ian uh, for the uh, training session for three weeks right. thanks guys <laughs> and maybe Pak Fuad before we end this uh, webinar yeah. we want to take a picture together <laughs> Oke, okay. untuk kenangan-kenangan Pak, mungkin bisa untuk teman-teman yang lain uh, turun on kameranya. Kita ada kenangan-kenangan sedikit nih, yang kita bisa ambil hanya untuk fotonya ya Pak. Mungkin nextnya nanti kita bisa kunjungan ke ITS. <laughs> Amin Pak. Amin, amin. Silakan Pak. Kami tunggu. Maybe after this, Mr. Ian will learn about bahasa and will, will visit ITS after this. <laughs> I, will, I will ask my AE Azia to pay me. <laughs> Oke, okay. mungkin belum semua. Kita tunggu. Ada yang mungkin mau dandan dulu, silakan. Oh, kelamaan ya, Pak. <laughs> Ini yang mau ambil dari pihak Bapak atau dari saya? Karena kalau saya mungkin nanya beberapa yang bisa ke capture. Iya, yeah, monggo. Sebentar, mungkin dari tim DPTS itu monggo. Hmm. Ya baik Pak, saya bantu untuk screenshot kan. Wah siap, terima kasih. Ya, baik, uh, saya hitung ya Bapak, Ibu, satu, dua, tiga. Oh belum on semua nih Bu, kayaknya bisa diulang nih. Bisa diulang. Nambah, nambah. Nambah lagi. <laughs> ya mungkin masih ada yang nambah lagi, monggo Bapak Ibu. Masih ada yang malu-malu Bu, mungkin ditunggu Gye. yang malu-malu. Ya, karena sesi terakhir aja mau... nanti ada kenang-kenangannya gitu. Saya kira sudah cukup ya Bapak Nge? Boleh. Mulai saja Nge. Baik, saya hitung. Satu, dua, tiga. Nah, selanjutnya, slide kedua. Baik, saya hitung. Satu, dua, tiga. Baik, terima kasih Bapak Ibu. Oke, terima kasih Bu Dinar untuk bantuannya. Sama-sama Bapak. Jadi mungkin sehat-sehat untuk semuanya. Ya, Mas Bambang, sama-sama. Ya. Sampai ketemu di event kita selanjutnya. Terima Thank kasih. Thank you very much, Terima kasih. Right, thanks. Right. Take care. I will send the slides to Bang Bang. Bang, Bang. Ya, okay. sure, Ian. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye. Assalamualaikum. 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 Terima kasih, Bapak. Terima kasih, Bapak Ibu.